Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree and today we got a really cool show for y'all. We're in Donisonville. We're at the foot of the Sunshine Bridge at Bo Dilly's Bar. Used to be the Sunshine Lounge. Everybody knows about the place. But what's going on today is the Sauce Pecan Cook-Off, and it's for Relay for Life. Sauce Pecans is one of the things that I really enjoy cooking. So, And I hear there's a whole bunch of different Sauce Pecans going on today. They got a 50-50 raffle. They're going to raise some money. So y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. All right, y'all. We got everybody gathered up here for the team. Let's get their names and where they from. Hello, my name is Bridget Landry. I'm from Pierreport. Sandy Gautreau, Napoleonville. My name is Will Smith. I'm from Brule St. Martin. Harley Landry from Pierreport, Louisiana. Jordan Alamo from Pierreport. And Melissa Terrebonne from Napoleonville. All right, Harley. Tell us what's going on today. What's going on out here? Um, we're having our first annual um, Sauce Pecan Cook-Off for Relay for Life American Cancer Society. Um, it's really nice out here in Donisonville, too. You couldn't have picked a better day to have it. <laughs> no, clear clear skies, no rain. It couldn't be a better day. We got some good cooks out here? Oh, yeah. We got some of the top cooks from around the uh, area. We have uh, Blanchard Seasonings out here cooking, and um, we have uh, Chris Badger running. It helps us out in a lot of places. They all, uh, they all spread out throughout Louisiana doing different uh, competitions and benefits and stuff. So it's, it's going to be some good food. Well, cool. Uh, and we're raising money. And, and tell me where this money goes. Um, our money goes directly, 100% um, proceeds to the American Cancer Society. When we finish up a benefit, we send a check over in the mail to them, and they just, everything goes to them to help hopefully find a cure one day. So we want to have this annually. Every year yeah. you want to cook here. We're, pro we're hopefully going to have an annual, every year, yeah, annually. All right. Well, that sounds good, y'all. Okay, this is what the money's for. We're fixing to get over there and see the cooks and see what's going on. It's smelling good. It is. All right, y'all. We made it over to the first cook, and look who it is. Kyle Blanchard. What's going on, man? Doing good, bro. Last time I seen you, you was cooking a sauce pecan. That's it. That's a uh, majority of the thing I cook. Sauce pecan, y'all, is, uh, is something unique that was brought years ago. I did a little research on it. Sauce pecan means hot and spicy, which... Uh, it came from the Spanish, the peppers that they used. The Spanish brought the peppers over, and that's where they got the spice from. And the French brought the roux over. And uh, that is more of a thickener and to get depth of flavors in there. So it's a red, for people that don't know, it's a red gravy and a, and a roux all mixed in one. And you can use a multitude of meats, as you can, you'll can. you find out here. Everybody's cooking a little different one today. Which kind are you cooking? I'm cooking shrimp and crab. Oh, wow. That's going to be a good one. Now, uh, where did you learn to, to cook a sauce pecan, Kyle? Well, when I was younger, I was at a party, and John Foss was cooking sauce pecan. And then I watched what he did, and I remember how it tasted, how good it was. So I kind of watched that, and then I took it from there, did my own little deal with it. Right. So you shooting for the, the false flavor, but yet you got your own twist to it. Right. All right, now now everybody's got their pots full, so I'm, everybody's got different techniques. And you're using seafood, so tell me the technique you use today. All right, what I'm doing, I'm gonna start with my roux. I got my roux going, and then I put my onions, bell pepper, and celery. And then when I go, uh, after that, I'll go ahead and put my tomato sauce, and my diced tomatoes, and rotel in it. And then uh, put a little hot sauce in it, add my water, and I'm gonna let that cook down in about 15 minutes before turning, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my seafood in there. Ah, so you don't want all your seafood to break right. up. I gotcha. put a little bit of sugar in it to get the tang out of the, uh, the tomato sauce. Okay. Now, now, is, 
if you was to put the seafood in there, it would all blow up and you'd have a big old pile of uh, yeah, seafood mushed all yeah. around in there. If you got any questions about my recipe, you can go to blanchardsblend.com and check out the res recipes on there. And I got this recipe on there, but it's I got it with alligator on my uh, website. Okay, okay. And if you'd have started with alligator, you'd, your meat would have been in there first. Right. Gotcha. And that's the difference, y'all. I my meat if I would have had turtle or gator or deer or whatever i would have seared my meat first right before my room so this sauce pecan cooking a seafood sauce pecan is almost close to a cubion it's, it's very close to a cubion right. where, the, where the meat goes in last right okay and you uh you got your secret ingredient in there the blanchard's blend cajun seasoning yes indeed all right y'all we're gonna check out these other cooks and uh let kyle get back to his work so uh y'all hang on fixing to get better all right, y'all made it over to another cook. Let's get his name and where he's from. Ken Rogers from Santa Mar, Louisiana. Now, what kind of sauce pecan are you cooking? A deer sauce pecan. Now, you was telling me you're cooking a backstrap. All backstrap. That's going to be a good sauce pecan, y'all, when you got just backstrap in there. Now, uh, where'd you learn to cook a sauce pecan? Where does that come from? Uh, my grandmother. We didn't have a whole lot to do, no money. And we just stayed in the kitchen and watched her cook. Gotcha. And she was a good cook. Excellent. Where was she from? Bell Rose, Louisiana. Oh, from Bell Rose. So she could cook anything. That's right. Well, awesome. Now, now, uh, tell me your style of sauce pecan. Where'd you start this morning? Now, with a backstrap, is a little different, huh? Yeah, I don't brown it like most people do regular meat. I just start off with my roux, and I'll add my onions into that roux. That way they smother down with it. Then I'll just come in and start adding some water, start breaking that roux down. Then I'll add in my rotel or whatnot. Start making the roux form shape. Right. Once it starts cooking down, breaking down, then I'll add my my meat okay. with my tomato sauce, and uh, come in with the mushrooms and green onions and uh, garlic, and just I don't season till later on. Okay. You let it all cook a while. Yeah. About how long does your sauce become take? Uh, about three hours. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now. When you hear sauce pecan, what's the main ingredient? You hot sauce. Hot sauce. You gotta have some heat. Well, that's what sauce pecan means. Exactly. Hot sauce. Exactly. All you right. Gotta have a bite. Well, cool. We're gonna check out his pot, and uh, I'm gonna wish you good luck, and maybe you can kick some of these boys' butt. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, y'all made it over to some more cooks. Let's get their names and where they're from. I'm Jason Joa from Pankerville, Louisiana. Bonnie Joa. That's your wife. That's my wife. Yep. She's a good cook too. Well, she's learning. All right. She's All right. Learning. She she's pretty good with it. Uh, tell me about the curve. Yeah, the curve cajun cooking. That's a little uh, catering business we have uh, out of Pankerville, Louisiana. We do a little traveling, do a little catering, uh, cook in different places. We cook here at Bodilla's on Thursday nights. We do a steak night here. Oh, steaks. Yeah. What y'all do? Ribeye. Good ribeyes. Yeah. Ribeyes. Yeah. Potatoes. So let's get to the cooking on hand, the sauce pecan today. What kind of sauce pecan are you cooking? Uh, today we're cooking turtle sauce pecan. Oh, now that's my favorite, y'all. For yeah. people that don't know, a turtle has seven different kinds of meat in it. Correct. From yeah. dark to middle dark to white to light to it's mm. snapper or loggerhead? It's snapper. Snapper? Yeah. Would you get one big one or a couple? Uh, well, he, he bought it. He sells it packaged already. So oh, I bought so it. Like, yeah. You didn't actually go I get the turtle. I didn't actually get this one and clean it. No, you didn't have to clean it. No, not this one. No. Somebody asked me one time, you know, said, how you clean a turtle? And, uh, you know, they were standing around and I don't think anybody knew. And I said, I know how to clean a turtle. You just lift his little tail yeah, up no and wipe right there. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> it's easy to clean a turtle. Oh, yeah. It's really, really easy. It's easy, yep. All right, man. Now, sauce pecan, where'd you learn it? Uh, I learned it from, uh, like I said, family. Uh, just go to the camp, the hunting camp when I was young. Stood next to Malcolm Murphy, Joe. Now, when you think about sauce pecan, you know, everybody says spicy or whatever. But what do you think about? Uh, to me, it has a lot to do with the, the color, also. You know, it's, to me, it's, it's a little different than you can have your real dark brown gravy and make your dark roux. But typically, a sauce pecan just has more red tint to it. You right, know? right, because it's got tomato and roux. Right, correct. Yep. And uh, how long does it take you to cook yours? Uh. It's good four hours at least to get the meat good and tender. Probably, you know, I'll start. That's that's with the meat. You know, I'll cook the whole thing a little longer, five six hours. And yeah. you put the turtle in the roux. Correct. Yeah. 
and then mix some of its own water. Then I'll add a little bit more of my own water or stock. You know. Okay. And then come back with the onions and all. Yeah, your... my onions and my. Do you have a secret ingredient in there that maybe the? Oh, might... uh, we have a hot sauce. We make our own hot sauce, and uh. There it is, right there. So we use that in all our dishes. All right. Well, I'm gonna let you get back to cooking, and I'm gonna wish you good luck. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, hard cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items, which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials, and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Hole in the Wall Seafood is back open and better than ever with South Louisiana's cleanest and best tasting crawfish. Now offering catering and on-site crawfish and shrimp balls. Or just stop by to get live and balled crawfish, fresh and balled shrimp, blue crabs and local caught catfish. And your favorite corn potatoes and sausage. But don't forget those cracklings you've come to love. Hole in the Wild Seafood, where quality matters. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com All right, y'all made it over to another cook. Let's get his name and where he's from. Kenneth Landry, and I'm from Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Now, uh, what kind of sauce pecan are you cooking today? I'm cooking a seafood sauce pecan, which is going to have crab and shrimp in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A second seafood we've heard of today. Now, uh, where where'd you get your inspiration for cooking? Uh, my parents, my dad mostly, yep, at the hunting camp. Yep. Yeah, the good old yep. days at the hunting camp. Good old days at the hunting camp, bunch of guys sitting around, Drinking a couple of cold beers and stirring the pot, telling old stories. Yes, indeed, and that's some of the best food, y'all. When you get to the camp, you could cook a, a, you can take some tree limbs and cook them, and they're going to be good when you're at the camp. It's, it's just going to be good food, oh, yeah. and you remember that flavor back. Oh from yeah, everything's better at the camp. Yeah, Everything always. is better at the camp. And you still go to the camp now? Still go to the camp now, yes sir. Where Let are me, you hunting? I hunt in Pearport Hunting Club. All right. And uh, we do the same thing. Everybody gets together in the evenings and cook a big meal and tell stories and laugh and cut up and hope, have a great time. And hope you don't stay up too late to where you don't make it the next morning yeah. to go hunting. Yeah, hopefully everybody gets up to go hunting the next morning. Well, uh, I, I was looking at your sauce pecan and uh, you've got a darker color. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And how, do you, how do you get that darker color for the people that don't I, know? I like to cook my roux a little bit longer, long and low. And the longer you cook it, the low it, it just darkens and darkens and darkens. Gotcha. Yep. Now, uh, something else we were talking about, uh, he's cooking a seafood sauce pecan. So and uh, we were talking about the ingredients, and most ingredients are the same. The Holy Trinity, you said, and yes, everybody's sir. got a roux, and everybody's got tomatoes, but something neat that he's got in, he's got a uh, fish stock. Yes, yeah. Well, when you go with, going with seafood, you got to have the seafood flavor, so I put a little fish stock in there. Yeah. That gives it that... that a little something extra. Right, right. And that, that might be the edge that I need. So you got shrimp, and he was telling me he got crab claws. Claw meat, yes, all claw meat. I find it holds together better, and it's got a little bit more flavor than the, the lump crab meat. And that's something right at the end. You, you don't put that, you put that in there early, you're gonna stir it up, and you're gonna end oh, up with yeah, a bunch you, of strings. No, you don't want it to fall apart. So you put that right at the end, so when you take a bite, you got a little hunk of that crab. Oh yeah, yeah, I like a lot of vegetables and a lot of meat. That way, when everybody, when you get a spoonful, you got a little bit of everything in there. You taste it in every bite. Now the spice, are you toward the nose running or just below nose running? No, or? just a little pick. I don't want people wiping their nose and 
you know, runny nose and have a paper towel for your for your lips and one for your nose. Yeah, that's just a little, just a little bite, just okay. a little bite. All right, bro. I'm gonna wish you good luck and uh, hopefully you can kick some butt out here. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Alrighty. All right, y'all. We made it over to another cook. Let's get his name and where he's from. Name's Cody Cozy from Bell Rose, Louisiana. Right down the road. Yeah, right down the road. Not not even ten minutes. <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better day to be out here, bro. No, beautiful outside. This is nice. Beautiful. I, I see a couple of them fighting the fires with the wind, but beside that, bro, this is South Louisiana. It's the best right here. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised. Normally, I'm the one with the fire trouble. Normally, yeah. somebody walks by and mine's blown out. You're going to find a board around the back <laughs> to lean up against exactly. it to keep the fire lit. Yes, sir. Now, what kind of sauce pecan are you cooking? Uh, I'm doing just I'm doing a chicken sauce pecan. Normally, I like, I like to do my deer meat, uh -huh. but... um. I had a leg injury, got in a car accident, uh, only got two deer my uncle killed for me this year, so I got to kind of conserve. Now, yeah, we, we ain't know, giving away all the deer no, meat. No, We're going to raise some money with some chicken. That's, that's correct. Did yeah. you go out and kill the chicken? Where'd you get them? <laughs> <laughs> I might, that might be a good idea. I might start raising some chicken. There we hey, go. Hey. There we go. You went down to the local grocery store and yes, picked sir. up some boneless we, thighs, you were saying? Yes, sir. That's my favorite part of the chicken little, right there. That's little dark meat, yeah. The dark you know, meat. No, white meat get a little dry, you know uh cooking it down so where did you where's the history of your sauce become come from history oh uh, my grandpa and uh, my uncle you know we sit outside pretty days like this yeah we uh sit outside cooking on a burner big cast iron pot you know uh listening to good country music drinking a few beers you yes, know yes indeed Whipping talking up. talking shooting the bull you know how, how long does your sauce become take uh at least three four hours gotcha you, you know, sat here and you started slow. with the roof yes sir the flour and grease that's where it started out and, and i was mm. talking with him mm. he's the chicken thighs if he was to put that in first it would just blow up yeah basically I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait about an hour and a half before, I, before i'm ready to wrap up <clears throat> i'm gonna uh, throw them in there they're gonna start falling apart and like you said blow up and just what spice are you shooting for are you gonna be on the hot side or the i'm gonna give you a little kick at initial, you know, ooh, but it's yeah. kind of you gotta be able to taste, taste, taste all the know? flavors, right, right? All the flavors in there. All you know, your onion, peppers, garlic, celery. You know, got a little seasoning in there. Yeah, it's gonna be good. That's, all right, it's good. Well, I'm gonna wish you good luck. Tenfold. Thank you, sir. All right, y'all made it over to another cook. Let's get his name and where he's from. Uh, Chris Bajor. I'm from Donisonville, Louisiana. Oh, you didn't have to drive far. No, about five minutes. About five minutes. <laughs> Right down the road. You had more trouble going to get your ingredients than you did anything. Yeah, probably. I was up at 2.30 ready to, ready to get this day started. I hear you. What kind of sauce pecan are you cooking? I'm actually cooking a seafood sauce pecan. It could be crab meat, shrimp, and crawfish. Oh, yeah. That's one of my food groups right there. Right, right. Now, uh, so that's one of those. We got some other seafoods being cooked, too. That's when you put the seafood in later. Correct. Right, versus right at the end. browning the meat. About 30 or 45 minutes before you're ready to serve. Or drop it in. Now you were telling me uh, your your uh, your cooking inspiration don't come back from when you were a kid. You said you no. didn't you didn't really cook. No, as a kid. I actually started cooking about 15 years ago. My mom kind of taught me a little bit, but I learned a lot from watching TV, Food Network, uh, yeah. the, the, the Southern Louisiana shows. Yeah, definitely. I, I, when I was a kid, I grew up with Justin Wilson. Oh man. And his onion. Oh, okay. He had onion. Yeah, he, he was a character. So you got plenty of onion in there? Oh, I got about five pounds in it. Oh, wow. Yep, plenty, plenty. All right. Well, now, what's the, the, the secret to your sauce pecan? You know, you know, we talked about it. You said trial and error, and you've learned, you know, different sauce pecans. You know, what, where do you think your secret of your sauce pecans? Patience, time. It's Definitely. Three hour, four hour. Four, at least four and a half, five hours. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, uh, something we didn't talk about is uh, here in Louisiana, we most everything we eat is on rice. And you were talking about. I prefer mine over pasta. I do too. I, I really do. It's I, it's it's a different it's a different thing. It's a little little bit break. You know, it gives it a good taste. I really yeah, like uh, it. I, I like it personally on uh, the angel hair pasta. I like mine over the shells. The shells. Or yeah. to get up in there mm -hmm. too. It'll get up in them yeah. shells and give them some juice. All right, bro. I'm gonna let you get back to it, and All I'm right. gonna wish you good luck. Appreciate it, man. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right, y'all made it over to another cook. Let's get his name and where he's from. How you doing, sir? My name is Michael Bayer, Michael Blanc, and I'm from Belle Rose, Louisiana. All right. Now, what kind of sauce pecan are you cooking? I've got about 10 pounds of chicken, and I'm going to have about 3 pounds of sausage and a big old chicken sausage sauce pecan. 
man and y'all this the smell coming out of this pot is really really good i don't walk by all of them but i'm telling you what this one's smelling really good over here thank you sir appreciate that now uh where where did you learn to cook a sauce because mike my dad uh cooked all this uh, mostly all of his adult life and i just learned kind of by watching him a little bit here and there and as my wife and as my wife and i we got married you know she kind of worked with me a little bit because her dad used to cook as well also and just kind of watching them and learning how to cook and then i'm, I'm visually impaired i'm legally blind so my vision is not all there i was born with cataracts and glaucoma so i just basically just cook you know with sense of smell and you know, right use, and that's what i was thinking senses, since yeah. you can't see I bet your smell and taste is better than the average person. Well, that's a uh, that's a misconsumption in some ways because normally people think that my senses are better. Uh huh. It's not it's not just so much that they're better. It's just I pay more attention to them. Yeah. So it appears that they're better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. You know, because because you you're take, relying more right? on those. You can you can you can take your sense your your sight of hearing for I mean your sense of hearing for granted because you can see. Right. So you don't have to rely on your hearing or your smell, but I have to rely on them because of my, my vision isn't the best in the world. I mean, gotcha. I can see, I can see enough to get around. I can see the camera. I can right. see your microphone, and I can see enough to to, to get by. All right. You know, but I love now, this. Now, now the sauce pecan. Yes, sir. You started with a roux. I started with a roux. And then you put the onions. Introduce my onions. Okay. Keep going. Couple what was cans, next? Couple of cans of Rotel tomatoes. Okay. Then I put some tomato sauce. Gotcha. Let that cook down. Then I come right here to my portable pantry. Uh-huh. My portable pantry right there. It's got all the good stuff you need in there. It's got all the good stuff in my oh, portable pantry. Oh, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. A little bit of love, a little bit of time. And I put a little, a little mustard in there. And that's what he was telling me, y'all. You, you, you put a little ketchup. A little ketchup. A little ketchup, a little mustard. A little mustard. And, and I then put the, some honey. The honey was the kicker, y'all. honey. Actually, and why? Actually, the mustard is the kicker. Oh, the, the mustard. The mustard gives it a certain smell after that. You notice the smell will change about five minutes after you put the mustard in. The smell is going to totally change. And but then the honey, you the were honey saying, will help with the acid of the tomato sauce. Because if you, if when you cook tomato sauce or any kind of tomato, you're going to have acid. So the longer you cook it, it helps the acid. You cook out the acid. But I find if you add sugar or honey, it'll help break down the acid. And I do honey because it's not quite as sweet gotcha. as, as, gotcha. as, the, as the sugar would be and the more onions you put that'll give it a sweeter flavor as well too awesome well i'll tell you what i'm gonna let you get back to cooking and thank you for stopping and talking with and us if i can give a plug in a cheap plug please check out my radio station bayou sounds radio we're online www.bayousoundsdj.com 24 hours a day seven days a week all your swamp pot favorites live right here on bayou sounds radio you heard it right here y'all good luck mike Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hydraulic Fabrication and Repair, located in Santa Mar, Louisiana, has been in the repair business for over 37 years, specializing in chrome rod, hydraulic tubing, and new cylinders. The benefit of a fully stocked warehouse of seals and chrome rods puts you back in operation, in most cases, in three days or less. We make hydraulic hoses and manufacture cylinders, offering 24-hour service and also pickup and delivery. Give Hydraulic Fabrication and Repair the opportunity to help your business. And remember, we can't fix it, it ain't broke! Gavis Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories with essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts and oh yes, that leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. Miss D's Sweet Sensations is a wholesale sweet shop located in Santa Mar, Louisiana. The business is locally owned and operated by Diane Bro. Now with 12 delicious varieties to choose from. 
You can find Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations in all of your local supermarkets and convenience stores. Made fresh daily by six full-time employees right here in Ascension Parish. Hey, store owners, restaurants, and caterers, if you're not selling Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations, you're not selling the best product on the market. All right, y'all, we made it inside of Bo Dilly's, and uh, the, the pressure's on in here. We got the judges doing the judging of the sauce pecan. We want to get their names and where they're from. Leland Falcon, Napoleonville. David Sagona, Pierre Park. <laughs> Jeff Jones from Donsonville. Lori Cavier, Pierre Park. Now, y'all got a hard job in here today. Yes, it's very <laughs> yeah. hard to decide. Yeah. Are they all good? All good. Every yeah. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Very hard. Very and, good. As we walked around and checked them out, it, they all had a good color, a good, good, a good smell, you know. And it, it I, I guess it's kind of hard to judge a chicken against a, a turtle, against a shrimp, against a. But y'all got the hard job right here to figure out which one of these is the best. Exactly. Has one stood out yet? No. Uh, it's, not it's, yet. It's very tight. Not yet. Very close. Between awesome. All of them. Yeah, it's hard to judge. <laughs> Got you. All right. Well, good luck to y'all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start off with our judging. We're going to start off with third place. Um, third place came out to Bayou Mike. If you could come up and get your trophy. Congratulations. Thank y'all. Second place. Jason Jirwa. Congratulations. <laughs> First place was extremely hard for our judges. They they had so many hard ones to pick from. It was really a tough decision for us. So we just wanted to let you guys know that that means y'all all did great. Um, First place comes out to Mr. Ken Rogers. All right, y'all. I got the winner right here, Mr. Ken Rogers. Congratulations, bro. Thank you. Man, that was some tough. That was some tough competition. I know it. I didn't think I had a chance. It, it's. It wasn't a lot of cooks, but it was seven good cooks. I'm gonna tell you, them judges couldn't figure out who was gonna win. Man. Seven great cooks. What? Now, what do you? Who do you want to thank? I want to thank my partner Wade, uh, Malet. I want to thank my grandmother for teaching me how to do everything I need to do. Intuition of being a coon ass. Um, <laughs> hey, that always pays off. Thank you. Awesome, bro. Now. Uh, Will you come back next year and defend your title over here? I'll be here this year, next year, and every other place there is a, a cook-off. Awesome, bro. Well, congratulations again. And you got it, bro. You wear the crown for a year. Thank there you. he is, champion right here. All right, y'all. Had a great day out in Donisonville, y'all, for the sauce pecan cook-off, which is one of my favorite dishes that I like to cook. So next year, I'm going to come over here and cook in it just for the heck of it. And that's what they do. They raise money for Relay for Life. And we met some new people. We ate some good food. And it's a good time over in Donisonville. And I want to thank everybody for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. And we'll see you next week.